Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here, and in today's Red Dead Redemption 2 video, we're going to be finding out what happens if John Marston visits the house of Pinkerton detective agent Edgar Ross. Now, I'm sure you guys know of Edgar Ross from the story of Red Dead Redemption 2. He was basically Agent Milton's right-hand man, and as you guys know, at the end of the main story, Agent Milton dies at the hand of Arthur Morgan, and Edgar Ross sort of takes his place. And also because Red Dead Redemption 2 is a prequel to the first Red Dead Redemption, to get you guys caught up, essentially Edgar Ross finds out who John Marston is, he takes him away from his family, and then he forces him to go kill his old gang members, like Javier Escuela and Dutch and Bill Williamson, and at the very end he betrays him, and he kills John Marston. And during the epilogue of the first Red Dead Redemption game, when you play as Jack Marston, you actually visit Edgar Ross's house in the final mission of the game. And this is what happens. Hello, sir. You work with the government? You one of them agents? Sure, son. <clears throat> Why you ask? Did you work with a man named Edgar Ross? I have something for him. Edgar Ross. No, but well knew of him. A fine man if he won a results. Won himself a chest full of medals. I think he went and retired about a year ago. Last I heard, him and his wife moved out to a cabin on Lake Don Julio. Lucky guy, getting to take it easy. He's fighting crime in this dump, that's for sure. <clears throat> Thank you for the information, mister. Excuse me, ma'am. Hello, young man. Hi. What are you doing out here? Are you out visiting the lake with your family? Uh, no, ma'am. I was looking to deliver a letter to Edgar Ross. Oh, that husband of mine. That bureau just won't get its talons out of him, even though he's retired. Edgar gave them some of the best years of his life. They ought to let him retire in peace. I'll not rest till they've killed him with worry, and he's such a sensitive man. I'm sorry, I shouldn't get so angry. I don't suppose any of this is your fault. There's no need to worry about him nowadays. Well, where is he? He and his brother Philip went hunting on the south side of the San Luis River. Be careful crossing over. They were saying it was dangerous. I sure will, ma'am. And don't worry about a thing. I'm sure your husband will be just fine. Excuse me. You Edgar Ross? Do I know you? Forgive me for startling you, sir. I have a message for you. My name is Jack Marston. You knew my father. <laughs> I see. I remember your father. I've come for you, Ross. <laughs> and you, boy, have sure shit found me. You killed my father. Your father killed himself with the life he lived. You killed him. I saw you. You keep saying that. You sent him to do your dirty work. Then you shot him like a dog. And I'll shoot you like one too, you little piece of trash. Now get out of here before I kill you as well. I ain't going nowhere, old man.
So even though you only go there once, one of the most significant moments of the entire game happens there, where Jack essentially asks his wife where he is, and then he ultimately has the final showdown with uh, Edgar Ross. And essentially, at that moment, Jack Marston gets revenge on every single member of the Vanderlyn gang, going back to the first death of Red Dead Redemption 2, because that's how long the Pinkertons have been hunting this group of outlaws. So it's a really cool moment right there, and it sort of finalizes the Red Dead Redemption series, because at that point in time, you would assume Jack Marston would go about living a normal life. And now going back to Red Dead Redemption 2, I wanted to visit his house in game to see if there's any differences, to see if, you know, Edgar Ross would actually be there, to also find out if there's anything cool there. So for starters, let's take a look at where the house is actually located. So it's on Lake Don Julio. In fact, the name of the house is also called Lake Don Julio House. So it's not like labeled as Edgar Ross's house. It's also like the only place around the lake. Everything else is pretty barren and desolate. And there's pretty much three structures at this house. The first structure is the main house itself, where you've got a small front porch. And on the inside, you'll notice that there's a handful of things that you can grab from the shelves and cupboards and drawers. However, the most significant thing that you can actually find is like this comic book series, which I found to be very interesting. So it's actually on the nightstand table, And it's called True Tales of Frank Heck, number 102. Frank Heck rides again in hell, heck and thunder on Rawhide Road. And I found this to be kind of interesting because it's basically a storybook of, like, outlaws. Why would Pinkerton detective agent Edgar Ross be reading about outlaws? That seems a little bit silly. Now, if you guys are wondering what the book is about, it is about Frank Heck, who was a famous gunslinger. And we don't know what happened to him or how famous he was, but he had a cigarette card and several books made about him. And he can also be found on Register Rock, or I should say his name is carved in Registered Rock, followed by 75, which details that Heck was in the Heartlands sometime in 1875. And his nickname is the fastest young man west of the Grizzlies. So maybe you could say Edgar Ross was researching on another gunslinger that he was trying to take down. I don't know. It seems like an interesting story to be in a Pinkerton detective agent's cabin in the desert. But uh, that's one of the things you can find. Another thing you can find in there is a cheat code. Right above the door, it says, Eat of Knowledge. So even if you have no interest to come here, you know, to find anything about Edgar Ross, you should come here for this cheat code. Because Eat of Knowledge will automatically unlock all of the crafting recipes if you choose to use the cheats in-game. So how about that? There's a pretty cool collectible, and there's also a pretty cool cheat code that you can find as well. Now let's talk about the obvious. There is no sign of Edgar Ross or his wife here, even though there are signs that someone does live in this establishment. Like, for example, there is a fire going that seems to be unattended. There's also two rocking chairs in front of the fire, as well as a bed that, oddly enough, you can sleep in or just sit on, although that does seem a little bit strange. And the cabin itself does not seem abandoned in any way. It's decorated, it's furnished, it looks like people actually live here, although the rest of the facility is kind of a mess. And I guess we'll shift our focus to that right now, because there's like two other buildings that looks like there's like a shed or a shack with a locked door. You actually can't go inside there, but I've peeked inside and there is literally nothing in there. And then there's also an outhouse, and that outhouse, unlike the one on top of Mount Hagen, has no one on the inside. So there's no one in the outhouse, there's no one in the little shed. The rest of the property is kind of a mess though. Like there's this stone wall built around the entire edge. But other than that, there's like a lot of like weird and miscellaneous barrels and rowboats and wagons. There's even like a chicken coop, even though there seems to be no sign of chickens here. So I don't know if this is just random props that Rockstar placed here or if it was supposed to give us an idea of who was actually living here and maybe Edgar Ross's more dysfunctional life. I don't know. It just seems kind of weird for a Pinkerton agent to have all this stuff just really lying around. 
So honestly, even though we found some pretty cool stuff in here, I am kind of disappointed that there wasn't, you know, either some reference to Edgar Ross living there. Like, it would have been cool to see like a Pinkerton badge if we could find it at this house. And maybe at this point in time, Edgar Ross doesn't live at this house. Maybe he lived here after retiring from the success he had of hunting down John Marston and the rest of the outlaws in the first Red Dead Redemption game. But honestly, who else would live here? And if so, why would then Edgar Ross choose to live here? It's in like the middle of the desert with nothing going on. Literally, sure, he's on a giant lake, but look, he's like in the middle of the desert. It can't be that exciting. So I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. What did you think of our visit to Edgar Ross's house in Red Dead Redemption 2? Were you expecting there to be more? Or did you think this was kind of the status quo? Let me know your thoughts, opinions, and more in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you guys down there. If you guys did go on to enjoy this video, though, a like rating would, of course, be awesome. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you want to stay up to date on all the latest GTA and Red Dead Redemption videos that I'm doing here on my channel. And quick reminder, if you want me to check out any secrets, mysteries, or explore any cool experiments, definitely write me a note on my Facebook page. You can send me a message, photos, videos there. It's the easiest way to interact with you guys by far. And a lot of the things you tell me to do end up making their way into some pretty cool Red Dead Redemption 2 videos. So be sure to check that out. But like I said, that's all I've got for you guys in this video today. Again, thank you all so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.